Hello, my name is Doug Darfus. Today I'm going to be showing you how to solve literal equations using multi-step examples. Why is it important to know how to solve literal equations? Well, taking a value that's known and using it in an equation to find out what's not known is a basic skill that scientists and mathematicians must have. By the end of the tutorial, you should be able to solve basic equations for one variable. Now to solve these equations for a variable, we'll be using inverse operations. As long as we do the same mathematics to both sides of the equation, the equation will stay equal or balanced. Looking at this scale, you can see it's balanced because there's three balls in each side. If I were to take away a ball from one side, it wouldn't be balanced unless I took a ball away from the other side. Now again, the scale is balanced. That's the same thing we're going to do with equations. Our first example, above the troposphere is a stratosphere. The stratosphere is about negative 76 degrees Fahrenheit. And we want to know what the temperature is in degrees Celsius. So we can use a formula, Fahrenheit equals Celsius times 9 fifths plus 32. What we know is Fahrenheit. What we want to know is Celsius. So I'm going to solve this equation for Celsius. In order to do that, the first inverse operation I'm going to do is subtraction. We can see that 32 is added to this equation. The inverse is subtracting 32. And so we have Fahrenheit minus 32 equals Celsius times 9 fifths. Next, we want to get Celsius by itself, so the 9 fifths is multiplied by Celsius. We want to do the inverse, which is division. Well, dividing by a fraction can be difficult, so we tend to multiply by its inverse. So I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal 5 ninths, and because the left side has more than one term, I have to put it in parentheses. So I have 5 ninths times Fahrenheit minus 32. and that equals Celsius. Now to solve our problem, all we have to do is substitute in the Fahrenheit temperature, which was negative 76. So we take 5 ninths times negative 76 minus 32, which is 5 ninths of negative 108, and that is equal to 60 degrees Celsius. In our next example, we want to find the velocity of a compact car that has a mass of 900 kilograms and the kinetic energy of 320,000 kilograms meters squared per second squared. Kilograms meters squared per second squared is also known as a joule. We start with kinetic energy equals one-half times mass times velocity squared. This is Ke equals one-half mv squared. The inverse operation here is going to be getting rid of the one-half by multiplying by its reciprocal, or two. So we have two times kinetic energy equals mass times velocity squared. Next, we're going to get rid of mass by doing the inverse of multiplication, which is division. We'll divide both sides by mass. Now we have 2 times kinetic energy over mass is velocity squared. Now the inverse of squaring velocity would be finding the square root. And so we have the square root of 2 times kinetic energy over mass equals velocity. Now sometimes we have to worry about these square roots being positive or negative, but because velocity is positive, we only are going to worry about the principal square root. Taking the equation, the square root of 2 times kinetic energy over mass equals velocity, we will substitute the values that we know. 320,000 joules for kinetic energy, 900 kilograms for mass, and as we work through the mathematics, we get the velocity is 26 and 2 thirds meters per second. In our third example, we want to shoot a model rocket off, a 20-foot platform. The rocket will not have a parachute, and we want it to stay in the air for 8 seconds before it hits the ground. 
we need to know what velocity we need to launch the rocket in order for it to stay in the air that long. We start with the equation h equals negative 16t squared plus vt plus s. We solve for v because we're trying to find the velocity. First, we will add 16t squared to both sides because it is the inverse of the negative 16t squared. Then again, we have vt plus s. The inverse of addition is subtraction, so we will subtract. That leaves us with v times t. We're looking for v. The inverse of multiplying is dividing, so we'll divide both sides by t. And we end up with h plus 16t squared minus s over t equals v. Now we will substitute in the values. We put 0 in for h, h being the height of the object at any time. Since it's hitting the ground, it, we want it to be 0. We'll put in 8 for t, because we want it to be in the air for 8 seconds, and 20 for s, because we're launching it from a 20-foot platform. Going through the mathematics, we get that the initial velocity needs to be 125 and a half feet per second. So we need to find the right rocket in order to launch it off at that velocity. In summary, to solve an equation, it's good to know what information you have and what you need. This tells us what variable we need to solve for. To solve the equation for the variable we want, we undo the equation by using inverse operations. 